Weekly closures come with high regard to price action, not only in the larger term, but also in the immediate short term. A few signals are popping up on this asset that may suggest the floor could be in, or at least close to one. Let's open up the charts to see if we can gain an edge for the coming sessions. Welcome back to the channel on this happy Sunday. This is Arca. Let's dive into ticker symbol COSM. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive in to ticker symbol COSM. And what we're observing here is the weekly time frame. And I want to point out something that's very important here. Okay. First of all, the obvious things. Okay. Let me just actually do that first. Right. So this is test number one of this macro formation called a descending broadening wedge. Right. So this is the test number one of the resistance, meaning the, the blue line here. Right. So we broke that resistance. We got test number one. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I extended this line just recently here, but I want to make sure that I can cover all of my tests correctly, right? So let me just extend it a little, little lower here, right? This is our test number two of the resistance, and this is our total test number three right here. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know what I'm going to say next, right? This test number three, yep, you guessed it right, usually leads to the biggest capitulation before any type of attempt for a true breakout test, which we, which would be test number four and five. Okay. So the reason why I'm saying that there could be a signal here that there may be a recovery soon is for the following. Okay. This is the weekly time frame. We already know, we already mentioned that the weekly close came in, <clears throat> right? So notice where the price action is on this weekly candle closure. It is very near the all time low. Right. So that that would be at, uh, I mean, it's not exactly 99 to be very precise. That low is actually, let's see, I'll go ahead and give you that exact. That exact lower valuation. There you go. It is 98.69 to be very, very precise here. Right. Or, or as uh, accurate as it can be. So, uh, yeah, let, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to that chart and point that out. Right. So, yes, we're very close to that 98.69 where price action may be able to find something that on a weekly time frame or on a bi-weekly time frame, we can officially call correctly by the book, a double bottom, right? So this may be the, this may be an early indication to one, but we don't know just yet. Okay. We're going to have to go ahead and go ahead and practice heavy discretion here as this would, uh, you know, this would indicate a, a, a complete recovery here, but notice how this red uh, weekly candle has not really given back anything from which uh, from what it has lost, which means that there is some st still some strength towards the downside. OK, so if we st if we start breaking beneath this uh, 9869, then some lower targets may be introduced here. But let's go ahead and go over every signal thus far. So taking a tra taking a, a Fibonacci retracement here from, say, the, the low of this candle here, to the top side of this candle here, which would be the swing low to swing high before we got this capitulation here, you're going to notice that at 98.85 is the one spot 618 target, right? And the uh, current low, of course, is 98.69. So that's already indicating that we could be near something that could be used for a potential uh, bounce. Not only that, is that we are getting uh, <clears throat> what could be... Uh, uh, and I guess it, I mean, it, this looks like a, a, a I don't want to say dragonfly. It could, it, I mean, it could be an inverted hammer, right? So almost no body at all with a long wick on top. I would love for this wick to be a little stronger than this to be considered a, an inverted hammer, but it's still at the end of a downtrend. And uh, it, it is, it is printing uh, that long wick towards the upside with a very small body at the bottom. You know, which would indicate a potential signal for reversal, and that being on the buy daily time frame, sure, we can give it some weight, right? So now I'm just going to go ahead and point that out one more time that there is a chance here that we can drop to 98.60 to 98.85 um, before a continuation to the upside, right? Which would be the candle here, and it would be also considered the double bottom, not only in a on buy daily, but correctly spoken, in a weekly time frame. So it's looking okay there too. Okay, team. So upon a bounce from that zone here, some of the resistances, I guess the more immediate short term time frame resistance would land right over here. I'll go ahead and jot it down for us to look at, right? So the top side of this candle here, which would be the high of, oh man, let me get the uh, OHLC to be seen. 
open, high, low, close, right? So there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, now draw in a range here. So the top side of this candle here would be 104 to the opening of this candle here to be 105. So uh, you know what? I'll put it to the top side of the... Uh, to the top side of the range here. So that would be 106 with a focus of 105. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 104 to 105, uh, 106, sorry, with a focus of that 105 right in between. Okay, so that's usually how we, uh, you know, I, I know you guys uh, watch me live and watch the videos here. So yeah, you, you guys are familiar with what I'm doing here. Okay, so here is the top side of the resistance. If we are going to start to uh, combat the upside, based on this uh, double bottom thesis, right? So please remember that it's not always the, uh, it, the, these formations don't always hit. It's better to look at things uh, statistically, right? But uh, here, let's go ahead and notice this. This is the eight hour time frame reversion variant, right? The reversion variant is actually the uh, volatility bands or the, um, you know, they, they can be considered Bollinger bands, right? So I have this script made out so that it can display to me what the mean is and also so that I can uh, identify or adjust the uh, standard deviation multipliers based around the mean, right? So in this case, I'm at a standard deviation multiplier of one. And that one just happens to be the support where we found support before breaking inside and closing inside of the eight hour reversion variance. So this is good. Not only that, we got a little bit of a bull signal here. So that means that we could be facing an upside. Yes, in eight hour time frame, of course, there is going to be variance, right? But if we start pointing out what that bottom side could be as far as the support, then I guess we can go ahead and just identify that as a potential 102 drop before a continuation to the upside. And that resistance can be found by touching 105 first, right? Remember 105 is the, uh, <clears throat> is the focus zone right up here, right? So I'm already expecting a potential resistance grab there. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and now move on uh, to the next chart. Oh yeah. So if we, if we're going to start reverting back to the mean here, then that would be a touch of $1 and 10 cents. So if we're going to focus on something up here, well, what do you know? My discretionary resistance is already jotted down here between the areas of 108 to 111. And of course we can go ahead and put a focus target there as well being 110 because the reversion variant is telling us that that would be mathematically uh, the next zone of resistance, right? So there we go. It's looking better now. All right, team. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this on the daily time frame. We are critically oversold in the stochastic momentum indicator. We are now expanding with volatility too. So this could be, uh, this could be an indication to where we may start to find an upside. Okay. So also the daily time frame printing in this, uh, inverted hammer as well. And not only that is that the inverted hammer has already penetrated the prior bar highs, right? So it's already printing higher bars than that. So that's also an indication of a potential upside coming in. And if we focus on the SMA 10 down here, let's go ahead and put a trend line there and see where it is, right? Actually, we can do it just like this, right there. Well, what do you know? That is actually at 108. And if we come back to our prior uh, resistance zones, highlight this, 108. We have it as our discretion already, team. So everything is looking and it's matching pretty well. There's no guarantee for this upside. I'm just saying that this thesis would be based around a double bottom on a weekly. Okay, and also on a, on a buy daily. All right, so now the 30-minute immediate short-term time frame suggesting a slight downside here. But mind you, we are in the gravitational zone here that could actually pressure price to the upside, which means that the shorter time frames may actually, yep, the shorter time frames may give us that support zone a little sooner than uh, than the one of the 30 minute. So five day time frame for a five minute time frame, for example, is already in that gravitational zone where we can find, face a bounce to the upside, thus cascading into the 10, 15, into the 30 minute to where we, the 30 minute never actually got to touch the SMA 14. It just bounced from its gravitation right here for a, for an upside move. Um, it looks like the uh, bi hourly time frame is reaching the opposing side's gravitational zone where it could face a little bit of a pullback there. But to tell you the truth, it's not looking like too much of a pullback because the four hour time frame is already beyond that uh, gravitational zone with an upside pivot and a pretty convincing one at that. Uh, now, following up here to the eight hour time frame, the RSI is approaching the gravitational zone here that could actually pull the price action towards the upside, thus leaving the SMA 14 behind it to act as some type, uh, some type of support in the event to where we do come back. 
Now, a uh, 12-hour time frame approaching the opposing zone's gravitational zone here, which would send price action back down ever so slightly. But please notice that we have the opposing gravitational zone where we came from and the SMA14 that could serve as a potential support for us to continue on to the upside. I would feel more comfortable to talk about the daily, the uh, three-day, and the five-day time frames upon further validations and confirmations from the shorter or immediate short-term time frames as they would actually... Uh, mitigate what the larger time frames are going to do based on the impulsive or, or based on the impulse right from these uh, from these shorter time frames. So the harder the impulse, the better it's going to be for the larger time frames to read. As right now, they're entirely unreadable and very much biased for no direction. Okay, team. So now you know the risks, you know the upside, you know the downside. So let's just go ahead and practice this practice heavy discretion within this. Okay, team. And uh, yeah, just to kind of put it out there real quick. I have three seats left for the Arc Masters trading course. So go ahead and get in touch with me if you are interested in that. This is going to be a 16-week mentorship and it is going to be available to uh, to the next, uh, hopefully, three seats left, right? So arcmasterscourse at gmail.com. Uh, this is set to start on November 11th, Saturday, and it would be 9 or 10 a.m. for an hour and a half course for 16 weeks, okay? So, that, that yeah. It's kind of a big commitment here for the uh, master students, but go ahead and get in touch with me there, team, and we'll go ahead and get you situated. I'll pass you the disclaimer, the syllabus, and all that good stuff by email. Please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything would be absolutely cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well, a very, very good night, and I shall catch you at the bell. Manana. Audio scene. Yeah.